back to the optics and model physics course we are discussing electromagnetic theory and in our previous videos we have seen maxwell's four equations as well as we have discussed uh, electromagnetic wave nature of light so in this video we will discuss boundary conditions so as i told when the light encounters any medium in between uh, how it propagates through that medium that can be understood if we know the boundary conditions so uh, objectives of this uh, particular unit we have already seen uh, maxwell's equations uh, we have uh, seen the propagation of electromagnetic wave in free space as well as in dielectric medium uh, in this uh, video we will discuss boundary conditions and in our next video we will see the pointing theorem so the objectives of this particular uh, lesson is to obtain boundary conditions for electric field for dielectric dielectric interface and we will also uh, see the law of refraction for electric field uh, so let's now consider to find out boundary condition for electric field first consider dielectric dielectric interface so uh, herein we have uh, taken the interface which is uh, shown by the horizontal line this is nothing but the interface between two dielectric media so medium one has refractive index uh, epsilon uh, one and the permittivity uh, sorry uh, medium one has refract uh, has uh, permittivity epsilon one and the medium two has permittivity epsilon so electromag uh, electromagnetic wave when propagates from medium 1 to medium 2 the electric field in medium 1 is denoted by e1 as you can see in the diagram and the electric field in medium 2 is denoted by e2 we have not considered normal incidence but we have considered that this electro uh, electric field is um, uh, inclined to this particular uh, interface so we have also shown the angles that is made by electric field in first medium and second medium as theta 1 and theta 2 respectively as this electric field is inclined to the interface it resolved into normal and tangential component as you can see uh, e1 has tangential component e1 t and normal component as e1 n as you can see in the diagram e2 also has tangential and normal components as e2t and e2n respectively so e1 and e2 they are resultant of the respective tangential and normal components so we can write equation as e1 is equal to e1t plus e1n and e2 we can write as e2t plus e2 so e1 and e2 these are the resultant of tangential and normal components now uh, how this tangential and normal component uh, pro, uh, uh, behaves as the electric field propagates from first medium to second medium that we will see now let's now consider a small circuit a b c d e at the boundary of these two dielectrics uh, now consider this path is path a b then this is path b c then third is path c d and this is path d a if we apply maxwell's equation to this path a b c d a that is closed line integral of e dot dl is equal to zero that means network done is equal to zero force into dis displacement uh, so if we put this uh, if we apply this particular maxwell's equation to this particular circuit uh, if we consider this first path that is upper a b path the electric field is e2 t uh, and if we consider the length of this particular path is delta w then e dot dl becomes e2 t into delta w now we have to consider some sign conventions for example just positive x we will consider as positive value negative uh, x will consider as negative value similarly positive y is positive and negative y is negative so now uh, for this second path uh, we have normal components of electric field and since it is negative y uh, we consider uh, that particular work done as negative and hence it is minus of e1 n plus e2 n both these normal components of e1 and e2 they are present along this particular path 
and uh, height uh, or the length path length is delta h total path length uh, and both are present at half the per distance uh, or half the length and hence we can write e1 n into delta h by 2 minus e2 n into delta h by 2. Since it is for third path since it is negative x we have written minus sign into e1 t because that component of electric field is present path length is same as that of path a b so it is delta w plus for this path again normal component of e1 as well as e2 are present along this particular path and hence and it is along positive y so positive or plus of e1 n and e2 n multiplied by delta h by 2 equal to 0 because net work done is equal to 0. Now, here in normal component get cancelled out e1 n e1 n e2 n e2 n gets cancelled out and what remains is only tangential component that is e2 t minus e1 t into delta w equal to 0. Since path length cannot be 0 we can write e2 t minus e1 t equal to 0 and the answer final answer that we get is e1 t is equal to e2 t that means the tangential component of electric field is continuous right tangential component of electric field is continuous if we consider this particular small circuit and normal components get cancelled out. Now, we know this uh, particular equation for displacement uh, vector d is equal to epsilon into e since epsilon uh, is the permittivity of that particular material. So, if we use d is equal to epsilon e, we can write this particular equation as d1 t upon d2 t equal to epsilon 1 upon epsilon 2. How do we get this equation for epsilon sorry for e1 t we can write epsilon 1 uh, d1 t for e2 t we can write epsilon 2 d2 t and then uh, the d components we, we can take on the same side and epsilon components we can take on the uh, other side and the final equation that we get is d1 t upon d2 t equal to epsilon 1 upon epsilon that means d1 t is not equal to d2 t and hence we say that the tangential component of displacement field it is discontinuous whereas tangential component of electric field is continuous. So, I hope you have understood this particular uh, conditions these are the first two boundary conditions first boundary condition is e1 t equal to e2 t that is tangential component of electric field is continuous and the second boundary condition is d1 t upon d2 t equal to epsilon 1 upon epsilon 2 that means tangential component of displacement field is discontinuous. So, here is the reflection spot for you. We have now uh, derived a tangential component only. So, can we use the same circuit to find out boundary condition for normal component of electric field also? You can think uh, over it and uh, you may get the answer. I hope uh, you have got the answer. The answer is no because if we use the same circuit, uh, the tangential component it will remain and normal component is going to get vanish or it is going to get cancelled. So, we cannot use the same circuit for the uh, to find out boundary condition for normal component. Then what to do? Uh, do not we have the boundary condition for normal component or normal component just get vanishes out? No. We have to consider another circuit or another structure at the boundary to find out normal components of the electric field. So, let us now consider a small pill box whose height tends to 0 or very negligible height it has. It has only surface uh, area, uh, it has only surface area that is delta S. So, now using Maxwell's equation uh, E dot ds, we have seen this equation first equation integration E dot ds is equal to rho by epsilon naught. Uh, here, uh, if we solve this equation further, if we take the, uh, that epsilon naught 
on the uh, left hand side of the equation. So, if uh, so, if we this uh, take this epsilon naught on LHS, uh, then it becomes epsilon naught into E ds is equal to rho. But as it is a purely dielectric uh, medium, this uh, rho that is surface charge density, free, sur uh, free charges uh, for free charges is equal to 0 since no free charges are available for dielectrics. And therefore, this epsilon naught E ds is equal to 0. But we know that epsilon naught E is equal to d and hence we can write equation as integration d dot ds equal to 0. For this particular pill box case, uh, we can consider the uh, displacement field in first medium as d1 and uh, displacement field in the second medium as d2. Uh, as we know, since the uh, height of the spill box is very very small, it uh, passes only normal component through it and tangential component will not be uh, supported by this particular structure. And hence for this particular equation that is integration d dot ds is equal to 0, we can write d1 n, we have to write only normal component. So, d1 n into delta s minus d2 n into delta s and that is equal to rho s delta s which will be 0 uh, since free charges are not available at the surface and that becomes d1 n delta s minus d2 n delta s equal to 0 and thus it gives us d1 n equal to d2 n that means normal component of that displacement field it is continuous. Uh, using the same equation, we can derive our next boundary condition since we know that this d is equal to epsilon e. So, uh, for normal component of electric field, we can write the equation as epsilon 1 e1 n is equal to epsilon 2 e2 n. So, we have our four boundary conditions as e1 t is equal to e2 t that we have derived by considering a small circuit. From the same equation, we have derived the second equation that is d1 t upon d2 t equal to epsilon 1 upon epsilon 2. Using small pill box, we have obtained this particular condition d1 n equal to d2 n that means normal component of displacement field is continuous. And from the same equation, we have obtained fourth boundary condition that is normal component of electric field is discontinuous across the boundary. So, these are the four boundary conditions for electric field for dielectric dielectric interface. I hope you have understood these boundary conditions. We have uh, used small circuit to find out tangential component and we have used uh, small pill box to find out normal component. Let us now consider uh, the same diagram that we have discussed earlier. Uh, E1 and D1 they are along the same direction that makes angle theta 1 with the normal and D2 and E2 they are again along the same direction that makes angle theta 2 with the uh, normal. Uh, we have to use the boundary conditions uh, where the tangential component and normal component shows continuity. So, we know that the normal component of uh, D field is continuous and hence we have written this D1 n equal to uh, D2 n. From this particular diagram, uh, we can uh, see here this, we can see here uh, if we consider this normal component as uh, E1, D1 they are as, along the same direction, D1, N is also along the same direction as that of E1, N. So, this D1, N makes angle theta 1 and D2, N also makes angle theta 2. So, here as it is adjacent side to this particular angle, we can write this D1, N as D1 cos theta 1. Similarly, d2 n we can write as d2 cos theta 2. So, we have written this equation as d1 n as d1 cos theta 1 that is equal to d2 n and d2 n is equal to d2 cos theta 2. Uh, 
we also know that this d is equal to epsilon e so we can also write the same equation as d1 n equal to for d1 we can write epsilon 1 e1 cos theta 1 equal to d2 n equal to epsilon 2 eta 2 sorry e2 cos theta 2 so this equation we have uh, obtained from boundary condition that gives continuity for normal component that is d1 n equal to d2 n similarly the uh, E1 that is tangential component of electric field is also continuous and hence we can use that equation E1 t equal to E2 t. Now from the diagram uh, this E1 t it is opposite to this angle and hence this E1 t can be written as E1 sin theta 1 and E2 we can write sorry E2 t can be written as E2 sin theta and both are continuous that means equal and hence we can write e1 sin theta 1 equal to e2 sin theta 2. Similarly, we have this equation epsilon 1 e1 cos theta 1 equal to epsilon 2 e2 cos theta 2. If we take the ratio of these two equations, then e1 e1 gets cancelled out, e2 e2 gets cancelled out and we get sin theta 1 upon epsilon 1 cos theta 1 equal to sin theta 2 upon epsilon 2 cos theta 2 that is tan theta 1 upon epsilon equal to tan theta 2 upon epsilon 2 and hence uh, the final equation that we get is tan theta 1 upon tan theta 2 equal to epsilon 1 upon epsilon 2. This is law of refraction for electric field. Similarly, there is law of refraction for magnetic field also present that we will discuss in our next video. Uh, so, here from this equation you can uh, understand that if epsilon 1 is greater than epsilon 2, theta 1 is greater than theta 2. Now, is this law of refraction same as that of law of refraction that you have studied for light that is Snell's law? that you have to think. So, we will discuss all these things in our next lecture.